All right, I've gotten a couple questions on how do I do that. Uh, so this is a, uh, a sweep of a filter. And um, how, do I, how do I use an oscilloscope to get an actual sweep? Um, so it requires two pieces of equipment. It requires a, a uh, oscilloscope, of course. It also requires a sweeper. And not just any sweeper will do. And so I'm going to explain that. So this is a graph of frequency versus amplitude. And this is from 500. So these little, these little marks here are the ends of the sweeps. It gives a little noise so you can see where the ends of the sweeps are. So this is uh, 500 hertz and this is 1100 hertz. And so the filter is somewhere around here, around, uh, around uh, 7, 800 um, hertz. And uh, it's one of these uh, Collins filters that I, I showed in one of my um, in one of my videos, and so the spec on this is uh, uh, 735 to 865 uh, cycles per second. Okay, so uh, it's going to be around 800, uh, exactly 800 hertz. So this should be right at 800 hertz, and showing you the shape of the filter. So how do I get how do I get this picture on on an oscilloscope? Well, um, if you just have a sweeper, then uh, the problem will be how do you synchronize to it. Um, so you need a sweeper that actually gives you a signal of start of sweep. So if you have a signal that's start of sweep, um, then you can sync on that. And so what's not really shown here is there's a channel 2. And that, uh, that channel 2 uh, sends a little a spike here right at the beginning of the sweep. And so you can trigger on that. So I have uh, two inputs to the oscilloscope, A channel, B channel. The A channel is this, but the B channel goes up to the uh, synchronized output of the sweeper. And that's channel two. And then I sync to channel two, and then channel, and then channel, one, looks, uh, channel one looks good. All right, so let's take a look at the sweeper. All right, so this is a uh, HP 33120A, 120A, and it has uh, two BNCs on the front. It has uh, uh, one BNC on the top that's, that's labeled sync and one that's labeled output. And so the sync is used in sweep mode, so you can set this up for sweep mode. And at the beginning of every sweep, it gives a pulse on the sync. And so that's key. So if you're going to want to, if you want to do this, you're going to have to have a sweeper uh, that has a sync output. Now, a lot of the cheap sweepers don't have a sync output. Um, they just sweep. And it's up to you to try to figure out how to trigger it. And it's just impossible to do. You need to have the sync output. So I thought, OK, well, not everybody can afford this. I encourage people to go buy this one because they're getting really, really cheap on eBay. You can, I think I bought this for $150, which is just, just is a really good deal. But I see them all the time under $200. So. Uh, uh, these are a real, uh, real nice uh, uh, function generator. So um, if you can't afford that, though, I thought, well, let me try to build something that people can afford, and it might be a fun project. So let me show you what I was doing. OK, so here's a picture of what we, what we need. We need some way of uh, sweeping a signal. So we're going to have a sine wave, and it's going to start out slow, and it's going to get faster and faster and faster and faster and faster, and then it's going to go slow again. So you're going to sweep between, say, 500 hertz and 1100 hertz, and uh, you need to have some way of making that go faster and faster and faster. Um, then you need the sync output. Now, there's two types of sync outputs that you might see. One is a ramp. One just says, uh, here's a voltage that's proportional to the uh, frequency that I'm outputting. And you could set your oscilloscope up to trigger on this. Or if, this is, uh, if, if you hook this up, you might find that your signal isn't exactly linear, that this might, this might kind of have a ramp to it, depending on your circuit. It might, be, it might look more like a charging capacitor. And so um, you could still use this signal. You could use the XY output or um, uh, XY input to your oscilloscope and run this into X and run this into Y. And you'd still get a good looking picture because you'd be synchronized between the two, even though this isn't linear. Now, if this happens to be linear and the sweep of a oscilloscope is also linear in time, then you don't really need the whole ramp. You just need a pulse. And that's what that uh, generator does that I showed you. 
Uh, sometimes the sync looks like this. Sometimes it's active high during the output, so it's high during the sweep, and then it'll have a low going, a low going pulse at at at, at the beginning of each sweep. Or sometimes the sync will be a uh, a positive going a uh, a positive going pulse. So it doesn't really matter as long as you can as long as you can um, synchronize it. You know, trigger it on your oscilloscope. You know, any any of these three things will work just fine. All right. So so how do we how do we do this? All right. And so let's take a look at um, what I've done. All right. I'm going to use an Arduino. Uh, so I'm going to use my favorite Arduino these days, which is this TT TTGO. It's actually an ESP32 chip, um, but I really like it. And the reason I chose this one is because it has two DAC outputs. It has a DAC1 and a DAC2. So you have a D to A converters that you can create uh, sine waves with. And so what I've done uh, is I've programmed uh, it to output a direct digital synthesis. So I have a sine wave recorded in memory. And then it's going to play that sine wave. Um, and we'll get something that looks like this. Okay, so obviously it's it's sweeping, it's changing frequency, it's going from, uh, let's see here, let's do a run stop, and we'll do a stop, there we go. So you can see uh, there's a uh, waveform, and you can see the individual uh, levels, so I have uh, a... I've digitized a sine wave for uh, 16 slices, okay? So there's eight, eight points going up and then eight points going down. Eight points going up and eight points going down. And so you can see the individual synthesis of the sine wave that I have in there, right? So it's giving out a very nice sine wave. Um, the problem is that uh, now how do, I, how do I synchronize to this, this sweep thing, right? So I have a second output uh, that I have going into channel two. And channel two is basically my sync output. So at the beginning of every sweep, I'm gonna I'm gonna send a pulse out here on channel two. So let's go to trigger on that. We'll go to menu. We're gonna trigger on channel two, which it's set to, um, and we are going to then come down here and see if we can't find where it's going to trigger. We're going to have to increase the sensitivity of channel two. There we go. So uh, it's kind of hard to see here. Uh, let me zoom in on it. Uh, let's see. I think you can see it now. Uh, so this is the sync pulse. So. Uh, it's high during the sweep, and then it gives a low going pulse at the beginning of the next sweep. So it's going to ramp up to the fastest frequency, and then it's going to start over again with a slow frequency. And so we're going to trigger on this, uh, on this channel too. Okay? And I have the channel uh, the trigger set right in the beginning of the, uh, in the, in the center of the oscilloscope. So you can see that we start out slow, and then it ramps up faster and faster and faster, and then it starts over and over and over again. So let's see if we can keep going out until we see two of them. There we go. So here's one sweep, and then a pulse, and then another sweep, and then another pulse. So, so there we go. So we can, we can back up, and then we can take our uh, trigger and move it over to the uh, uh, left-hand side, uh, left side of the oscilloscope here. I've gone too far. Oh, come on. Let me go back. Sometimes this thing goes way too far. There we go. So beginning of sweep, end of sweep. And uh, yeah, so it's going to work great, right? Yeah, it's noisy in the garage today. My daughter's doing laundry and the trash man's coming. And anyway, so we're going from low to high. The problem is, is how fast is fast? How, how, how high in frequency can I go for this in this, uh, in this arrangement? So we're going to we're going to trigger again right in the middle of the oscilloscope, and I'm going to zoom in on it, okay? And so that's as fast as I can go, all right? So uh, 
let's go in a little a little bit further a little bit further and then we will we will move our trigger over there we go so if you take a look at this waveform uh, there's these flat spots let me let me stop it so it's not bouncing around there are these flat spots and so the the four next loop that I have in the program is just set you know set and repeat and so it takes time to set the d the the a to d or the d to a um, it takes time and so there's some minimum amount that we can actually uh that actually we we, we, we can accomplish and unfortunately it's not very fast now i thought this uh this esp32 chip was going to be super fast but in fact, it ten, the A to D seems to be, I keep saying A to D, the D to A seems to be very quite slow. Um, so I think I'm maxing out a lot at, at around, well, here we can measure it. All right, so there's our waveform, and I put two cursors on the step, the step uh, uh, time. And the uh, delta x to x is 20 microseconds. So it takes 20 microseconds per step. So take out a calculator, uh, 20 microseconds, and we have 16 steps per waveform. So 16 times that is 320 microseconds. And that's only three megahertz, 3.125 meg uh, kilo uh, kilohertz. So three kilohertz is as fast as we can go if we still want to have 16 slices. Um, we could probably speed that up a bit and, you know, get up to maybe six, six kilohertz, but it's still way less than, I want to have a megahertz. I want to be able to sweep up to a megahertz in my, in my, uh, in my ideal thing. It, you know, maybe you can make an audio one that sweeps up to, tw you know, 20, ki 20 kilohertz, but even then you want at least to go to a hundred kilohertz. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's just way too slow. So anyway, um, while this was a good idea and the design would have been really simple and easy and cheap, uh, it just, uh, it's just limited. It, it, unfortunately, it's just, it's got a fundamental limitation of how fast it'll go. Um, so maybe it'd be faster if I actually used an R2R ladder. Um, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna try that, but at least for now, uh, yeah, this is a big fail. Which is too bad, because, uh, you know, it would have been a cool thing. <laughs> oh, well.